All right, in the last video, we looked at the overall classrooms and kind of how the tiles lay out. Right now, I would like to take you through the settings of each particular class. Each class has its own tile, its own color, and its own set of settings. You can schedule if you want, and we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. But under the settings tab, you have a bunch of different options. One, you can view the sessions. Now, the sessions, every time you run a session, it archives it so that you can go back to it. It's really great for talking with students and parents, parent-teacher conferences, something happened. Um, you can always pull back and look at a class. So, for example, here's a class where there were sessions, and on February 10th, the session ran from 108 to 208 for 60 minutes. You'll notice that another time it ran for 20 minutes, another time it ran for 366 minutes the time is variable, like we were saying. So you don't have to run it for a specific amount of time. You can run it for as long as you need, whenever you need. But in this particular one, you'll see that there's chat logs. I can view the session. I could view the chat logs. I could pull up what we said, who said what, when they said it. But I also can click on it. And when I look at it, I can actually see what they were looking at, doing. I can click and have it give me the exact information of what exactly went on. I can see a whole timeline. Now in this particular situation, this student needed help um, and I was able to log in and talk with them. And what that's what we were saying about it, not necessarily always being a disciplinary tool. I was told that this particular student needed help. I was able to jump in and troubleshoot with this student because I can see what they can see. I can message them and I can talk with them and chat with them and try and get them through it. Now, you'll see in your sessions, you can see timelines, exactly what the student was doing when they were doing it. You can zoom out and see that I talked to the student basically between 140 and 156. You can see what sites were being looked at. You can click and see what tabs were open, who was saying what, who was doing what. If there was a screenshot taken, you could look at that. And if there was anything in terms of like commands that were taken, you can also see that. You can walk back one step right up here. You can go back to the test class and look at the overall sessions. You also, at any time, once you press the sessions and get into this sub menu, you can also look at the students, any recordings, who's teaching it, and the overall settings of the class at any point. When we come back to the tile, you'll see that the settings button still shows calendar. Now, this is how you can schedule. Now, you can schedule either here or you can schedule here on the side. I'm just gonna show you the settings version. It takes you to the same button and you can adjust, add, edit any schedule that you have. So for example, my test class goes live eight to three every Monday through Friday. I could change that for future days. I could say, okay, I'm gonna have it run from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Wednesdays but I'm gonna keep everything else the same. Or I could say, I'm not gonna monitor Fridays anymore. Now, even if I'm not monitoring on Fridays, even if it doesn't turn, <clears throat> even if it doesn't turn on automatically on Friday, it would still be able to be turned on at my beck and call. Now, if we try to add another day, just so we're clear, Saturdays and Sundays are disabled. We do not allow any monitoring on Saturdays or Sundays. That protects the student. It also protects you as the staff member. Basically, it's Monday through Friday. That's when our monitoring, like collaborative monitoring, starts and stops. So you'll see even on your calendar, these days are just blocked out. Now, if I press previous, I can look at previous weeks. I can go back to the classrooms by hitting the tab in the left. So view sessions, calendar. Now, if I recorded something, I could go to the recordings for that classroom. Now, I haven't recorded anything in the past, so there's not going to be anything to look at, but that's where it would be for you. If you wanted to edit the class, you could. That would go down into this edit button, and you'll see you can name, edit the name of the class. You can edit the color of the class. You can edit the scheduling of the class. And... You can change or turn off the session report emails. Now, after every session, you will get an email. If that bothers you, you can turn that off. It does not turn off the overall um, 
features. It just means that there's not going to be a, an email at the end of the day that tells you this is what happened. So if you are getting emails about it and you don't want them, that's where you would go. So next, set a default scene. I don't particularly set default scenes, but I can see the value. If you click on that, it will give you a list of the current scenes you might have built. And then you could pick one and say, so like, for example, if Facebook's just an automatic every day, I know I'm going to turn that on one way or the other. I could press save and this class's default scene would be that. The next thing you can look at is co-teachers. In terms of adding a co-teacher, you have two options. You can add a teacher over here on the right. But when you add them, you can click the person and they get one of two roles, helper or teacher. And essentially, the only real difference to think about here is one teacher can end a session and helpers can't. That's the basic gist of the difference. Honestly, I don't see if there's a person that you're having work with you that you know you felt was uh, a, a, such a close person that you needed them to have go guardian access. I don't see why you wouldn't put teacher, but they have two options, uh, teacher and helper. Now, as you come back into your settings, you're also going to see, you can add students in the moment, or you can archive or delete the class. Now, if you archive the class, it will fly over here into archived and you can keep them for as long as you like, or you can just flat out delete the class. Now you'll notice if I hit delete class, it's going to say deleting a classroom cannot be undone. All previous sessions, browsing reports and screenshots will be deleted. So if any of that is documentation that you as a teacher particularly want to keep, I would never delete a class. You don't have to delete classes. You can just archive them for later. If you're going to delete it, you need to physically type delete in order to get this thing to go away. If you archive a class like so, for example, I'll just archive this one and I'll archive this one and I'll archive this one. And I'll archive this one. You'll notice that in my archived classes, they're all there. I can still go into them. I can still see the sessions. I can still see the students. I could also restore them at any time. And that just cleans up my active area. So that should tidy up all of the general buttons and things you can click in the classroom tab. And in the next video, we're going to try and focus on scenes.